Okay. That's just about perfect. Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Cooking with Retired for Life. Now I've got another dead simple recipe for you here today, but we are starting ahead of time. It's evening right now. So this roast is gonna go in the slow cooker tomorrow. But what we wanna do is get it marinating. So this is a blade roast, not an expensive cut of meat. So I love doing this in the slow cooker and it makes it come out really nice and tender. And it is pretty much a one pot meal. Once we get past the marinating, put everything into the pot and away you go. So let's get this roast ready to go. So the marinade is really simple. So it's gonna be one clove of garlic, so let's get that prepared. So what I like to do is cut the two ends off of the garlic, especially this one hard end, and then lay your knife blade flat over top of it, give it a whack, and everything comes off just as easy as, as you could want. There it is. We'll get rid of that. And then we'll chop up our garlic. Now we do want this to be reasonably fine because we want it to let its flavors out. And it is just one clove, so this only takes a couple of minutes to do. Again, nice sharp knife. Watch your fingers. So there's our blade roast. Let's slip it into the bag that we're gonna use to marinate. Now, when you make your marinade, do not put salt into it because salt will draw the moisture out of the meat and that's what you don't want to do. So let's get this mixed up. So we're going to start out with a bit of red wine, about a cup, and I have got a Jackson Triggs Marlowe here. Now this is a winery down in Niagara-on-the-Lake region, right in my neighborhood where I used to live. So. We'll add about a cup here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And, oh, well, maybe we'll add a cup here too. Next thing we want to add is a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Now this doesn't take much, so we'll add about, oh, I'd say two tablespoons. There's one, there's two. And then we want to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So I would say about a half a cup is all you need in there. And we'll zip that up. And give it a good shake around. And there we are, not very complicated. It's ready to go. All right, see you in the morning. Well, good morning, folks. We're ready to get back to work here on our uh, slow cooker recipe for pot roast. So we got our ingredients out. We'll start preparation, get this stuff going in the pot. Oh, now, come on. I know what you're thinking. It is just coffee. See, coffee, that's all. Now, just as a side note, according to cooking with retired for life, there is proper etiquette to follow when using a Viking mug. So if you guys are interested in seeing a short on that, let me know. All right, let's get geared up and get to work. All right, folks, I wanna start off by getting a few things out of the way. So the potatoes I do like to use, same as I use for stews, is these mini potatoes. I really like their texture and I like their flavor. Now the one thing I would caution you about with potatoes, if you have a potato that's got green on it, get rid of that green. Don't cook the green part of the potato. It's not really that great for you. Okay, so here's the complicated part. Yeah, there's the potatoes out of the way. Now let's get our carrots cut up. Now with a slow cooker, you want to put your hard vegetables like carrots and potatoes on the bottom and then your meat goes on top of that. It takes a little more to cook a potato and 
to cook carrots. So they go under your meat. All right, there we go. We've got our potatoes and carrots ready to go. We'll throw the lid on top of this and put it aside and move on to the next stage. So the next part of this is preparing our meat. So what I want to do is, even though this is a slow cooker dish, I do want to give it kind of a roasted flavor. So to do that, I'm going to brown the meat and I'm going to do some onions too. So this is just regular cooking onion. And we're going to cut this up into quite big pieces. So that's it. Not much chopping involved there or anything. Now the idea is to get the onion in there and browning. That browned onion flavor will add to your roasting flavor. So we'll just break these up quickly here. And that's it. We're ready for the fry pan. So our roast has been sitting overnight in that marinade we prepared yesterday. Let's get it out and have a quick look at it. Now the marinade is done, we're not going to reuse that. But if you look at our roast, it's browned actually a little bit and that's from chemical cooking from your vinegar. So I like to take the, uh, a roast this size out of the fridge about an hour ahead of time and just let it sit. With, uh, with beef, you want to try to get your piece of meat up fairly close to room temperature before you actually start cooking it because that will give you a much more even cooking. So this has been sitting out for about an hour now. We're gonna put it aside, get our fry pan hot, and get these onions done. All right, we're coming along. So it's time to start browning our roast. So hot pan. So what we want to see is a little bit of the crispy brownness coming up on the edges of this. You see that? Doesn't take long. And you can see those brown edges coming up already. As it's that brown edges that you get your roasted flavor from. You can see that it's not burned, just browned. Okay, that's just about perfect. Now I just want to finish up these onions. So you can see as they're cooking here, they're getting nice and soft. They're all coming apart on the layers. We're getting a nice brown to them. That's what we're looking for. All right, onions are done. We'll take them off the heat and we're gonna add them into our pot here very shortly. Okay, our roast is ready. Nicely browned. And I put that in on top of our potatoes and carrots. Then we're going to add in our onions. So next we're going to add a couple of cloves of chopped up garlic to the top. All right, let's chop this up. Now this doesn't have to be chopped too fine because it is going in the slow cooker and it's going to be in there for quite a while. And we'll just let this come down on top of the roast. 
so those flavors seep in. All right, that is all the chopping and frying and everything else that has to be done. Next, we're going to prepare a sauce that we're going to pour over top of this. Okay, so we got about a cup and a half of diced tomatoes. Tomatoes naturally go with beef very, very nicely. Think about it. What's better than a slice of tomato on your hamburger or your tomato sauce with your spaghetti and meatball? So it is a very natural combination. We're gonna take this with all kinds of work and preparation. Part right on top. All right, there's a good deal of our sauce already set to go. So next I wanna add a bit of beef broth to it. And we're gonna very carefully measure out uh, about two tablespoons, maybe three. All right, that looks good. We're gonna add a little bit of water to this. I'll be right back. All right, so we got about a cup and a half there. Don't be afraid of tasting things while you're going. Now, I'm not looking for super flavor or anything like that. I just wanna make sure that this is going to taste like a decent beef broth. That's pretty good. So the next thing I wanna add, give it a little bit of spice, is probably two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, that looks about it. And then a little bit of olive oil. So this is extra virgin olive oil. Whisk that up. And we're gonna pour about half of this over our pot now. All right, with that done, I wanna add a little bit of red wine for a little bit of flavor. So let's Add a couple of glugs there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We're back up to about a cup and a half. And I think we need just a sip of that for the chef. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's add this to our pot. And that's it, we're ready to go. So how easy is that? We got this all set to go. So I've got it on, uh, on high here and I'll leave it there for a half hour just to give it a chance to heat up. Then it's gonna go down to low and it will sit for about eight hours before we actually eat. Is that right? about six hours and look at the mess we made we've got one dirty measuring cup one dirty fry pan and a couple of utensils and that's it so very easy to do so we're going to leave this the only work left to do here is to create our sauce once the cooking is done we'll take all our, our meat out and take the vegetables out take our sauce add some thickening to it and then it will be ready. So let's leave this. We're gonna go get on to other things, probably get back out to the shop. And then at dinner time, we'll come in, finish this up, and we'll see how it tastes. All right, cheers, we'll see you shortly. All right, folks, so we have been cooking away here for quite a few hours, so we are at the next stage so what we need to do is get everything out of our broth in here get our broth into a pot and then we're going to reduce it down a little bit so let's see how it looks does that not look wonderful
Now, one thing I forgot to put on the uh, first section of this that I wanted to tell you about, I added some mushrooms to this. Now, I don't like adding fresh mushrooms to a long cooked uh, pot like this because I find that it adds too much flavor from the mushrooms and you get almost an earthiness to it that I am personally not fond of. So I do still like mushrooms, but what I did in this case was I added two tins of buttoned mushrooms and probably three or four pinches of salt to it as well. Let's check our doneness here. Just what we want. Now when you take the lid off of this and look in, it, it looks like it's full of nothing but liquid and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I've got way too much liquid in there. But once you get all of the solids, you get your potatoes and carrots and meat out of there, there really isn't that much. All right, so we're gonna set this in the toaster oven partly for safekeeping because my sous chef, the cat, our vulture is hanging around and partly to help keep it warm. That is a beautiful rich broth. Yeah, look at that. All right, so slow cooker is off, unplugged. We've got our pot here. Let's do a quick bit of cleanup. Then I'm gonna thicken this up and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done that. All right, let's get, all right folks, let's get our roast out and see how it looks. I'm not sure I'll be able to slice it, but we'll do what we can. There's my friend. I'm afraid he's spoiled. Okay, let's see what happens here. Whoa. He's very determined. So as you can see, the knife just falls through this. Let's plate a little bit of this. Now this has not got any green vegetables with it. They, for my taste, the green vegetables are a little too easily overcooked in a slow cooker like this. So if you want to have something like snow peas or green beans or anything like that, don't cook them in this dish with the slow cooker. What you'll have is green mush by the time everything's done. So these, just the, how you can cook things like potatoes, obviously, carrots, uh, parsnips is a nice thing to add. Some people will add pieces of turnip. Not for me, but I've heard of it being done. All right, let's sauce this up a bit. So there we are, folks. A lovely slow cooker pot roast. Let's give this a little taste. Now that is beautiful tender. That really turned out good. So that's about eight hours you want that uh, going in your slow cooker. And then it's just fall apart. So lots of time involved, as in the uh, roast sitting in the marinade and then uh, everything sitting in the slow cooker. But the preparation is really simple, very straightforward as you saw. Don't have to worry about being exact on your ingredients or anything like that. It's a little bit different every time. All the more fun. 
So that'll be it for today's video, folks. I hope you found that interesting, very least entertaining. Maybe later on it'll be a bit tasty for you too. So thanks very much for watching. Remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we'll see you out on the trails the next time.